This one is a Stanley Herwood number 20. So it has the striker on the back. Looks like someone's modified the tip. Here's a better look at the tip. I used a propane torch to heat up the tip. So here's the tip reshaped and then I heated it up red hot and let it cool down slow. So this metal should be dead soft right now. Here's the tip after the 240 grit belt. It looks pretty even. Now I'm going to move on to the medium red conditioning belt. I did enough with the red conditioning belt just to convince myself the tip is looking good. Now it's time to heat treat it. Tommy, get ready to punch it. I'm coming down to your will. So I heated the tip until a magnet wouldn't stick. And then I quickly quenched the metal in oil. Now the metal's rock hard. 
you can kind of check it with a file. The file won't dig in. Now I have to temper it so it won't be too brittle. I brighten the metal back up with the medium red conditioning belt. I need the metal bright because I'm going to temper by color, not by temperature. And I need to be able to see this tip change color. So I'm going to heat, I'm going to heat the shaft about here, and I'm going to watch the color of the tip go from shiny steel to like a gold color. And that'll be my temper. I think that's called a straw temper. See the color? It's starting to work its way up. See the gold starting to work its way to the tip? Here it comes. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Ah, wow, it looks like I overshot it. I turned blue. Whoops. So what happened there is I overshot my temper. I ended up with a blue temper rather than a straw temper. I'm gonna heat this back up to non-magnetic, quench it, polish it, and try tempering it one more time. All right, let's try this again. Right, I'm gonna pull it back now. Watch it work out. Almost there. I'm gonna end up dunking it in water to stop it. So it looks like this time I got that gold color I was looking for. I ended up dunking it in water to stop that tip from overheating. So you can see it went from blue, you see the purple in there, and then the gold on the tip. That's the temper I was looking for. And I think that worked out. All right, here it is. After the red medium conditioning belt and the blue fine conditioning belt. I think it's looking pretty good. Right. I'm gonna move on to the furl now. I'm going to use my plastic abrasive bristle wheels to get where the shaft goes into the furl. I went from 80 down to the 400 grit wheel. nice thing about these plastic abrasive bristle wheels is I don't end up wearing a bunch of little tiny wires. I've showed this trick before, but maybe someone new is watching. You take your cheap Amazon wire brush, a piece of heat shrink tube, run it up like that. and that concentrates the bristles makes it ideal for getting around lettering sometimes I'll even double up on the shrink wrap 
add stability to those bristles. Okay, I got the markings cleaned up. Stanley Herwood, number 20, Main USA. The markings aren't very deep. So I'm going to have to be very careful when I clean this ferrule up. I don't want to lose any of these markings. So I ended up using just the medium and fine conditioning belts on the furl. They did a good job. And it looks like I was able to preserve all the markings. I'm going to use Evaporust Safe Erase paint remover on the handle. I like this stuff because it's pretty low odor. The directions say to let it uh, soak for an hour. Okay, it's been an hour. Let's see how the safe race did. I think all the paint's loosened up. Looks pretty good. Let me wash this off with soap and water. Here's the handle rinsed and dried. I think the safe erase did a decent job. The butt section's pretty beat up. I think I'm gonna try to reshape it with my 1x30 sander. I think that looks better. The rest of the sand I'll do by hand. Here's the handle sanded down to 220 grit. I polished the metal striker on the back here. Now I'm going to give it a couple coats of shellac to seal the wood and fill up some of the grain. I applied two coats of shellac, sanded with 320 between coats. Now it's ready for finish. I applied masking fluid to the metal striker on the butt of the wood handle. I find that this stuff is easier than trying to cut out a correct size piece of masking tape. Here's what the Stanley Herwood number 20 looked like when I brought it home from the flea market. And here it is now. I painted the handle with two coats of Satin Canyon Black. And of course Chuck and I polished the metal with flits.
I think the reformed tip came out pretty good. I think this little line is from me folding up the metal when I was reforming the tip. So, was there a Mr. Herwood? George E. Wood of Southington, Connecticut made a deal with John A. Hurley, who owned the Acme Manufacturing Company, to make his new screwdriver design. In 1901, their partnership became the Herwood Company. Hurley relocated in 1903, and Wood formed the G.E. Wood Tool Company and kept making his screwdrivers. Stanley Ruin Level was his biggest customer, and in 1910, Stanley bought Wood out, but retained him as superintendent of what had been his factory. George Wood also developed a through-handle chisel design that would become the popular Everlasting Chisel. This is the type of project I enjoy the most, picking an old beat-up tool out of the 50-cent bin and restoring it back to close to what it would have looked like new. Reforming the tip was a new experience for me. I was successful enough to want to try it again sometime. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I've included associate links in the description to some of the products I used on this project.